Hello everyone, in this video we'll discuss about gyroscopic couple. In earlier videos we have discussed about angular velocity which is rate of change of angular position of a rotating body and total angular acceleration which is rate of change of velocity with respect to time. Now whenever there is change in angular velocity of a body it can happen in three ways. One by change in magnitude, by change in second by change in the position, third by change in both magnitude and position right. So we derived an equation for total angular acceleration where there was change in magnitude of angular velocity of rotor which was denoted by d omega upon dt and change in direction of the axis of spin which we denoted by omega d theta upon dt and angular acceleration is denoted by the term alpha. So this is the equation when both magnitude and the direction of axis of spin are changing. Now let's take a case where we say that there is this rotating body a rotor rotating at angular velocity omega along the axis OX right. After some time we are changing the angular velocity of the body and we bring this rotor to a new position which is OX dash. So here the axis of spin was along OX and now what we have done we have just changed the axis of spin to OX dash keeping the magnitude of angular velocity same. So the change is done only by changing the direction of uh, axis of spin and not by changing the magnitude. So how much time it takes? We assume that this change is for very small angle which is del theta. Right? The angle is very small. It is usually 1 or 2 degrees. But just to make it clear, it is magnified as shown on the large scale. So for change of this very small angle del theta, the time taken is also del t. And this is happening in clockwise direction right now to understand this we can always plot the vector uh, diagrams and to see how the whole system is working so firstly the angular velocity is omega along the axis of spin o x right so while doing the vector while drawing the vectors what we do the length of this vector o a it will show the magnitude of angular velocity omega right the direction will be parallel to this axis OX and the arrow, the sense will be denoted by right hand screw rule where the curling of fingers will show the sense whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise and the direction of thumb shows us the direction. So for clockwise if you curl your fingers right if you curl your fingers it will be towards O A, right? It will be towards A. The arrow will be towards A. Now, after certain time, after a small change of angle del theta, it moves to a new position, which is denoted by O B, right? So, what is the change in angular velocity? The change in angular velocity is denoted by this vector, which is A B, right? Now, this vector A B. What it shows, it shows the change in angular velocity, right? Whatever the change in angular velocity is there, it is denoted by this vector AB. Now, again, if you apply the right hand rule, we know that this change AB is in clockwise direction when we are viewing from A to B, right? Now, whenever there is change in angular velocity, right? There will be change in angular acceleration and this change of angular acceleration will also be along this vector AB the same direction and same sense. By same sense I mean the change in angular velocity is clockwise so change in angular acceleration will also be clockwise. And the value of this angular acceleration is omega t theta upon dt because there is no change in magnitude so we will not be using this term. There is only change in the direction of the axis of spin therefore alpha or the angular acceleration which acts along this vector OB and is clockwise will be omega d theta upon dt. 
Now in this formula, omega is what the angular velocity, what does d theta upon dt represents? d theta upon dt represents the change in excess of spin of the rotor and this is also called as the angular velocity of precision. It is denoting the angular velocity of excess of spin because initially this is the axis along which the body was or the rotor was moving and this axis is moved to a new position which is OX dash. So d theta upon dt it denotes angular velocity of precision and is denoted by omega p. Now we already know what is the change in angular velocity which is along this vector a b. It is if you look in this triangle o a b it is omega into this small angle which is del theta and angular acceleration is what alpha which is change of angular velocity omega del theta upon del t because the small change of this angle or the small change in the excess of spin of rotation of the body it takes in very it happens in very small duration of time which is del t right so when we apply the limits we get the formula alpha is omega d theta upon dt where d theta upon dt I have already told is the angular velocity of precision and denoted by omega p. So alpha is omega into omega p. Now we already know that along this vector ab angular velocity is acting and also angular acceleration is there. Now whenever there is acceleration there is some force applied. Any body cannot accelerate or deaccelerate itself. There has to be certain force. So now whenever we want to produce angular acceleration some force some torque has to be applied and this to produce this angular acceleration we have to apply a torque which is also along this axis of a b and this torque is known as the gyroscopic torque now see we say that this is a gyroscopic couple by couple we mean two now in nature no force exists alone they always exist in form of pairs right if you talk about like newton's third law of motion to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction for every centrifugal force there is a centripetal force if you apply force on a wall wall is applying the same amount of force to your body in the similar manner whenever we are applying torque a b to this body nature is applying another torque right the reaction torque in the opposite direction which is this b dash a dash so for every action there is a reaction so action is what the application of torque along a b and reaction is what this vector b dash a dash the magnitude of both of them remain the same what is different is the direction right so the formula for like force is mass into acceleration so for torque it is i which is moment of inertia into angular acceleration and what is moment of inertia it is m k square right or we see that moment of inertia for any rotating body it is what it is basically the resistance to angular acceleration or deacceleration which is equal to the product of mass of the body into the square of the distance square of the particular uh, perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation so the formula for acceleration of torque becomes i omega omega p now we have already seen that when a rotor is rotating the axis of spin is about o x axis that means the plane of spin is y z now whenever this position changes the axis of spin changes to a new position it happens about the axis of oz which is the axis of precision or an xy plane now because of this change in action reaction right active reactive couple acts which is known as the gyroscopic couple and it acts along the oy axis or in xz plane now in this figure you can see there is this rotating body rotating at an angular speed of omega and ox is showing the excess of spin this is from where the viewer is watching now see whenever you're talking about the sense of rotation clockwise air or anti-clockwise the position of viewer is very important right so we say that this body is rotating at an angular velocity of 
omega right now if i want to change the direction of axis of spin i i change it across this axis which is axis of precision or oz now to move this axis of spin from ox axis right we need to apply certain torque some force is required so this torque is known the applied torque is known as the active gyroscopic torque now because they act in couple so because of this gyroscopic torque there is a reactive gyroscope torque applying which tends to rotate this rotor in opposite direction right if if it tends to rotate in counter clockwise direction the reactive gyroscopic torque it tends to rotate it in the opposite direction but now see gravity is also acting the weight of the body is also acting so but the body does not fall because the combination of this active gyroscopic torque and reactive gyroscopic torque it keeps the body rotating along this axis right it keeps it rotating it does not fall because there is this torque action and reaction acting and it keeps the body stable in its position therefore we say that gyroscopes they can defy gravity so the effect of gyroscopic couple on rotating body it is also known as the gyroscopic effect on the body thank you